Andrew, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. Hey, um, just after the first couple of years that, that you had here with the Giants, you guys have an opportunity Sunday to make the playoffs. Just how much would it mean to you, you know, personally to, to get that done? Um, it definitely means a lot. Never played in the playoffs, you know, as long as I've been in the league. Um, so it's definitely something, you know, you look forward to. Thank you. Uh, it's all right. Tom Rock. Andrew, you played in a lot of big college games. How, mm-hmm. how do they compare to, to the NFL? Is there any, any lessons that you can take from that to, uh, to, to bring to these, these games going forward? Um, I think it's different. I'm at Georgia. We play some teams that, um, you know, you have a week off playing smaller schools and stuff like that. But the NFL is different every week. Um, you're going against the best in the world. Um, there's no time off, and each game, you know, counts, you know, for winning. Even during, to how about towards the end of the season though? You know those those games get get very important. I would think that there's there's a little parallel there or no? I would say like the atmospheres um, will be similar, um, but I've never been to a playoff game, so I don't know um, what the playoffs are like. Brian Dunleavy. Hey Andrew, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. When did you become a believer? Like when did this feel possible to you? Like. This the last two years, like you didn't have it, you know. You knew by midseason it wasn't a playoff team. When did this feel possible? Was it after the week one win? Was it before the season even started? With the feeling, was it uh, when six and one? When did you know? Hey, this team, something, there's something different about these Giants. Yeah, I would say um, like early into like like the off season, um, just the way that we jailed, um, the energy um, that Coach Dapel brought in early. It was just a different feel around the building. And then obviously the first game, um, you know, it was a great win. And that, I think that just sparked the season from there on. I don't know if you heard what people were asking Darius about the wide receiver room, but I'm going to try to draw a parallel. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the last two years, anybody with an outside opinion beat up the Giants offensive line as not good enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now that's what people do to the Giants wide receiver room. Like, who are these guys? Not high draft picks you know underproductive and yet they came out and gave you a big game last week what have you seen from richie james darius isaiah hodgins these guys that maybe have faced a lot of adversity in their careers benched and whatnot and delivered for you Uh, they're kind of your go-to weapons now on offense yeah i would say they're all resilient um they've got their opportunities and they made the most of them regardless of what you know people say about them or what they may think um, when the when the game is you know game is on, they're they're ready to play. They're playing tough, physical, you know, making plays for us, and um, we reap the benefits of that. Thank you. Yep. Patty Trina. Hey Andrew, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. Andrew, a bigger picture question, if I may. What have you seen as far as the growth of this offense from week one to now? I know there's been some twists and turns with new faces and whatnot, but where have you seen the biggest growth overall in this offense? The biggest growth? Um, I would probably say just like how we've, we started to gel like later in, towards the season. Um, I think early in the year we were really good at running the ball, and then there was a stretch where we were throwing the ball. But I think um, over the last few games we've been able to do both really well, and that's what you need um, to win. How hard was it to gel, though, with you know the injuries and you know different people coming in and out of the lineup? Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, um, in the last few games, we rotated you know the left guard um, in different series, and that's you know something that's not easy to overcome. But we have a good group of guys, um, everyone trusting each other, and uh, we go out there and try to make plays. Thank you. Yeah. Paul Schwartz. Hey, Andrew. How you doing? Good, good, thanks. Um, um, you know, we, we've seen Brian Dable obviously on the sideline and things like that get very emotional, hot, you know. Um, mm. Have you, you've obviously seen that too. Has that been directed at you personally, you know, on the, you know, for something you've done at any point? Yeah, it has. Um, I think it was Chicago game. Um, I had a mental error and went the wrong way. Could have been a big play. Um, he was on me. And uh, I mean, that's what you want from your leader to hold you accountable. Um, I'm supposed to be a good player, a captain. Um, so when I, you know, have a mental lapse like that, obviously he's upset about it. What does on me mean? You know, how did that manifest itself? Uh, just just vibrant, yelling, whatever it is. I'm um, just trying to get his point across any way he can. Now, at that second, you know, you said that's what you want in your yeah. coaches, right? At that second, I'm sure you're not thinking, 
boy, this is terrific. I'm glad he's yelling at me. You know, I mean, is there like a process you have to go through where maybe you get mad at him, then you get mad at yourself, and then you correct the error? You know, how does that work in your head? Well, I, I have, like, pride for myself, so I'm already, you know, frustrated before he even says anything. Um, I try to high, like have a high level expect, expectations for myself, regardless of, you know, what coaches may say. So by the time he came over there, I already knew what I need to do and, you know, and, and fixed it the next few drives. But he's not, you know, I mean, some coaches kind of keep that level up a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He doesn't see, he seems to do it, get it out of his system, maybe go on to the next person. But you would not, you know, how would you describe him as far as his level of, um, you know, temperament, you know, overall? I would say, I mean, he has energy whether we're doing good or doing bad. Like if there's something that he needs to fix, he's going to be energetic about it and let you know. And if we make a good play, he's going to have the same energy and uplift us. So I think he's just an emotional coach and um, that's just how he is. But we appreciate him. Thank you, Andrew. Yep. We'll take one more. Ryan Dunleavy. Andrew, I know you've told me before that running the ball is harder than passing the ball, and that's why a lot of teams pass the ball and it's it's harder to run the ball. I, th I think I'm summing that up right. Um, my question is, did you think you showed something to the NFL and to opponents with the way you guys passed the ball against the Vikings? That really is an element of this offense we had not seen, whether – you knew you could did it, or even if it surprised you. We hadn't seen Daniel throw 40 passes for 340 yards to a bunch of receivers with nine yards, nine catches each. Do you think you showed something, and did you, did that even catch you by surprise, the ability to do that? I think that's, that starts with our coaching staff, and that's the beauty of you know our play calling. Whatever's working that day, that's what we're going to do. If we're running the ball well, we're going to run the ball, and if we're passing it like we were, um, we're going to pass it. And I think that started with DJ. Did a great job. The receiver's getting open. I think the offensive line, we got to be better in pass protection because I, I think we left some plays out there um, just, you know, pressure in the face for, for DJ. But I think he did a great job.